intimidated by the statistics. Statistics is a weird thing. Josh, this doesn't make any sense at all. You know, I do genetics research. I don't do marble research. That first year, I got nine people watched my videos. And now you have yeah. 8 million plus community. We full of equations and formulas. Right. And here yeah. comes Josh Tamo with all of yeah. images and where words are. Book, uh, the StatQuest Illustrated Guide to Statistics. As a data analyst, numbers are everything for us. Statistics says two plus two is not four. But every time I get French fries, they give me a different number of French fries. That statistics is about differences. And that's what I think is the magic of statistics. They're scared of implementation of statistics. Bag full of m, &M. Done. Undergrad level of statistics, then grad level of statistics. And you I didn't understand statistics. The Z-test. All a T-test is, is this type of regression. Hi and welcome to the very first episode of Decoding Data Analytics. This show is all about analytics from the perspective of global data experts who are CTOs, authors, analytic leaders, hiring managers and top data professionals. So, and I will be your host for the show, Janvi Narang, currently working as a data analyst at Lowe's. Our very first guest is Josh Stammer. He is the CEO and the founder of very famous YouTube channel named StatQuest with Josh Stammer, where he posts a lot of videos around statistics and data science and breaks down a lot of complex topics into a very easy to understand format with musics and graphs and whatnot. Bam! He's also written an amazing book named Illustrated Guide to Machine Learning and is also a lead AI instructor at lightning.ai. Hi, Josh. Welcome to the podcast. All right. It's really good to be here. Thank you very much for inviting me. Uh, but before we you know, start and more delve into technical questions, could you run us by your journey from working at Research Lab to YouTube channel and to now writing book? Uh-huh. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so I... I wa I did not. I wasn't born with a YouTube channel. <laughs> I had. A, I used to work in a research lab. Uh, it was genetics research lab, and I was uh, the analytics guy, um, which sounds really fancy, right? Uh, but it just meant that I wasn't afraid of math, and everybody else was. <laughs> <laughs> You know, they were, uh, you know, either they were, these guys were great biologists, great geneticists, and doing really cool work. Um, but uh, they just, you know, they were intimidated by the math. They were intimidated by the statistics. Statistics is a weird thing. Uh, and and it, it makes people uncomfortable. And so it's not, I mean, I did the analytics. It's not that I was an amazing, you know, brilliant biostatistician or something like that. It was, it was more like I was the guy that was willing to do the T-test for people. So <laughs> relatively, relatively, you know, not the most complicated statistics procedures, you know, I could draw them graphs, you know, that kind of thing. So, uh, but Josh, this doesn't make any sense at all. You know, like my boss, <laughs> he, my boss is particularly relentless. He was like, uh, this, you know, I don't get it, you know? And I'm like, well, what part do you get? He's like, none of it, none of it makes any sense, you know? Um, and so I would have to go back to the drawing board and, and, and try to come up with a different way to explain it a way that might be more relatable. Uh, from their perspective, what if I instead, you know, oftentimes statistics is taught in a very abstract way, like with just equations, or they'll or they'll try to help you imagine what's going on. They'll say, imagine you have an urn full of marbles. Uh, it's it's it's, and that's great for statisticians because you're like, I don't know, you can easily imagine an urn full of marbles. But for uh, for other people, they're like. What is an urn full of marbles got to do with what I'm doing with, I do genetics research. I don't do marble research, yeah. you know? So, uh, so uh, it forced me to kind of come up with a way to, to try to relate to people and try to talk about statistics in their language and use their language, use their examples, use their data. Um, yeah. And, and also just like, golly, I gotta, I gotta come up with a way to make this easy to understand. So, and so ultimately that I start, you know, those little seminars that I would do that were disasters at the beginning, but people were patient and I owed them a lot for their patience. Uh, they were patient and I got better. And I ultimately started putting these little seminars on YouTube because I worked in an academic lab and there were new people coming in every six months. And yeah. I was like, 
I was like, what I, all I want to do is I'll just put it on YouTube. And, and when people come into the lab and they need to learn a new topic, they can just watch it on YouTube. And I was like, oh, this is going to be perfect because that was, I was like, oh, I'm killing two birds with one stone by putting my stuff on YouTube. This is going to be great. And it was great because that first year I got nine people watched my videos and that was a huge success because that meant nine of my coworkers were watching my videos when they needed to learn something. And hopefully they were, they didn't come ask me a bunch of questions afterwards. So I hope that meant that they were actually learning stuff from the video. So I was super pleased after the first year when I just got a handful of views, uh, because I knew my, the goals that I set out for myself, I was succeeding. You know, mm -hmm. I was, I, uh, the things that I wanted pe to have happen were happening. And that was amazing. That was a huge deal. Um, it's just so have, And now you have yeah. 8 million plus community. That's so yeah, huge. Exactly. How do you yeah. handle that? Uh, well, uh, you know, <laughs> it's very surprising, right? <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, 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 obviously other people started watching these videos and it kind of caught on and, and now people outside of my lab are, are familiar with, with what I do, uh, which is really cool. Uh, people all over the world. Uh, yeah. uh see it. And that's I just it's that's really cool, right? Um yeah. but it's uh I don't know, it's just it, it's it's very cool and it and it it brings me a lot of joy to know that what I'm doing is is important and it's making a difference. Uh I, I used I obviously I used to work in that lab and that was great, but over time I realized that I needed to spend more time doing these videos. I, I needed to spend all my time doing them because that was the, the videos were, were making the biggest impact, making the biggest difference and helping the most people. I, when I worked in the lab, it was great. I, I helped 20 people and that's a big number of people to be helping. That's a huge number. Yeah. Um, but the videos were reaching more people. Uh, and I just, I was like, well, that's, that's what I need to do. And so that was, that was sort of the journey from sort of day job, a career that I did for 13 years. I was an assistant professor at UNC and I worked there for a long time. Um, and, and, but then I transitioned a few years ago to, to doing YouTube full time, uh, because I, it seemed to be the most important thing I could do. And that's how your book was born. Well, the, the book is kind of interesting for years. People convinced me that I, I, I should write a book. And then I just had to figure out how to write a book. Most books, most books are, are, are all about words. Yeah. You write, you write a lot of words and I'm not good with words. W words are tricky and it's hard for me to express myself and the concepts in my head with words. I'm a very visual person. Uh, so I had to figure out a way to make a book that was very visual and could, and the words were secondary that the primary thing on each page were the images and the, and the, and the text was just there to sort of like support the images and point out certain details in the images that you might not notice. Uh, because if, that would be the first uh, statistics book because everyone would imagine, okay, that the stats book would be full of equations and formulas. Right. And here yeah. comes Josh Tamer with all of yeah. images and where words are secondary. So that's right. a huge thing. Yeah, the, the words and the math just sort of support what, what we see. And now, I, once I wrote the first one, I was like, "Oh, this is really fun and really rewarding and really satisfying. I love it." Uh, so I'm I'm already starting my next book, uh, the StatQuest Illustrated Guide to Statistics, as a follow up to the StatQuest Illustrated Guide to Machine Learning. Um, Ooh, and wow. so I'm I'm really getting the getting StatSquatch and Norm getting them excited uh, about yeah. it too. So I'm I'm really excited um, about the next book. Wow, that's super amazing. Yeah. You know, as a data analyst, numbers are everything for us. Our primary job is to help, you know, marketers, product managers, and even, you know, non-technical people. And for that, statistics is a great tool to make sense. But mm -hmm. that subject is very scary, as we just said. So yes. how, like, can you help our viewers understand how can they make sense out of numbers using statistics? How can take that first step? Yeah. Yeah. So a big, so one thing is come weird about statistics so we all take math classes we, you know when we were young we had to take math classes and one of the first things they teach you is that two plus two equals four and statistics says two plus two is not four 
it's different. And we can calculate, we can, every time you do that math, you're going to get a different answer. And you're like, how does that even make sense? Right? Because it's just a number two plus two, another number equals four. How can I get something different every time? If I told someone to measure a two foot piece of string or, or, uh, and then I got someone else to measure a two foot piece of string, those two pieces of string would actually be slightly different, right? Those, those, I mean, they would not be exactly down to the most infinitesimally small decimal place the same. There's going to be a little bit of difference always. When you go to a restaurant and you order French fries, I love French fries, but every time I get French fries, they give me a different number of French fries. You know, it's never the exact same number of French fries, right? Everything we do is different all the time. If you look at people, we're not all the same height. You could have two people, right? And you could and you could put them together and you say, we've got two people and then we got two other people. And sure, that makes four people. But that, but if I take any four people in the world, they're gonna have different heights, they're gonna weigh different things, they're gonna um, you know, they're gonna be shaped differently. Everything about them's different. And so say, like I've I say I've got two people plus two people, and that's four people, but that's a that's a that's a unique set of four people that's very different from any other group of four people. And all the measurements we can take of those people are going to be different from any other group. And that's a, I think that's a, that's a tough thing for people to understand early on that statistics is about differences. And what I love about statistics is thing it, it is the difference. Cause that's, that's reality. Everything's, you know, you look at it, you look at a tree out the window and you'll see, you know, how many leaves are you going to see? You're going to see one number. You look at a different tree, you're going to see a different number of leaves. Variety is what makes the world kind of cool and interesting and fun. The fact that we're different. And statistics is the one math, the one math that I know of that doesn't just freak out with that for variation and the fact that everything's different. Instead, statistics says, this is cool. Let's not only is, is, is this the way the world really is, statistics says, how can we understand and try to quantify this variety that we have in our life so that we can use that variety to make good decisions. Um, and that's what I think is the magic of statistics. And so if you're interested in statistics, the very most important thing you need to know is that it's all about variety and variation in the fact that in life, nothing is the same. Even if we try our hardest to measure two pieces of string the exact same length, we will fail at some very small decimal point. We might get close, but it'll never be exactly, exactly, exactly perfectly the same because that's just not the world we live in. Yeah, wow, that's amazing. Thank you. Uh, talking about your past experience when you worked in you know, research lab, you implemented statistics in real. Recently, I posted out a question on uh, LinkedIn to understand what exactly everyone assume of statistics. And the most questions I got was that they're scared of implementation of statistics. They're not able to relate theoretical uh, concept to actually connect dots into the practical life. So since you have already worked in a research lab, would you like to share some of your experience where you implemented uh, some of the statistics topic or, or maybe some project you worked on? Yeah, so um, yeah, so statistics is kind of scary, right? How do you actually apply it? How do you know when to apply it? Uh, and you can see what other people do in your field. Uh, that's what I did. Uh, I just sort of like read lots of, uh, I was in an academic lab, so I read lots of academic um manuscripts and articles and i just but you can do this in any field because any field there's usually other people publishing something in that field uh it doesn't have to be academics you could be in industry and doing statistics in a very specific area but wh what do you do you just look to see what other people are are doing and you go okay well so other people are doing you know this thing called a uh, 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 Fisher's exact test, 
which is based on something that sounds crazy complicated called the hypergeometric distribution. And if that doesn't sound intimidating, then that's crazy, right? Because any when everyone, I mean, not only is this, okay, hypergeometric distribution is no big deal. It's just imagine you've got a an urn full of marbles. And I'm like, oh. Yeah. You know, that's confusing to me. I because you have to imagine an urn full of marbles in your head. And then you're like, well, how does that even relate to what I'm doing? Uh, so try to think about it in terms of what you're doing. And that that's sometimes hard. So here's a halfway, here's a halfway point. Start with something you are familiar with and you might have on hand instead of an urn full of marbles. What if you had a bag full of M&Ms or candies, like a certain type of candy that you might like? And, yeah. and you've got different colors of candy in that bag. Instead of different colors of marbles in an urn, you've got candy in a bag. And, and I'm like, oh, I like candy. <laughs> and in fact, I have a bag of candy. And so I can actually like physically understand the hypergeometric distribution with a bag of candy. And I can, I can put the statistical test. Sounds like the craziest things ever. But if you really understand the concept of a P value, you, like in a deep way, what a key value is and how it's calculated, generally speaking, then creating a new statistical test isn't that hard. Uh, and and I did it. And I, I, it's just one of those things. It's sort of like it's sort of like it sounds really cool that you've invented this new statistical test, but it's, um, you know, because like who does that? But you can actually do it. And it's actually necessary to do because because the, the world where we live in is actually evolving very quickly rapidly in terms of data we're getting new types of data uh, oh yeah that's, that's that was one project i had was was inventing a new statistic related to uh how chromosomes fold on themselves <laughs> oh, wow. yeah that's also quite quite interesting uh, you know everyone says that statistics is the base of machine learning uh, if you would have come across this uh, meme, which was very viral from Scooby Doo, we do that one person is, you know, uh, pulling out the mask and behind data yeah. science and machine learning, it's statistics. So do you have yeah. anything to say on that meme? I, and do you agree to that? Yeah, yeah, I mean, in some ways, I agree. There's a lot of overlap, but there is difference. Um, there is difference in that uh, statistics is even though we've talked about how like math is like in this ethereal in the heavens, you know, that's where math takes place and statistics takes place on earth. <laughs> uh, there's, there's all the statistics is still a little, it's like halfway between heaven and earth. Uh, and I feel like data science is a little closer to being about earth. Uh, and, and, and when, and when we do data science, not only are we interested in, you know, taking the data, doing the statistical tests, but we're also oftentimes, sometimes we have too much data uh, yeah. to, to solve a problem in a short period of time. And we got to figure out how to make it really work. And sometimes that means instead of running this neural network on our CPU, we run it on a GPU, something that's does arithmetic a little faster and it's those details that are very different from what a typical statistician would ever talk about a statistician isn't often interested in optimizing their equations for real world applications and that's that's something that's i think unique about data science and machine learning in these other fields that are that have a lot to do with statistics and are and are based on statistics but these other fields are a little closer to the earth and the world we live in because they deal with realities that statisticians often don't deal with statisticians are often like oh just imagine you've got a lot you've got this amount of data and and a data science is like well actually this is exactly how much data i have and it's too much to run through the computer right now so what do i do how can yeah. I put this on the cloud? How can I distribute this? So there's a lot in common, but there are some different problems that that uh, that machine learning and data scientists have to deal with. That a stat normal statistician would be like, uh, whatever. That's you know, that's, that's not, not my, my concern. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 
yeah that's amazing interpretation uh yeah. while i was watching uh you know your one of your podcasts for the research and i saw you mentioned that you have done undergrad level of statistics then grad level of statistics and you understand none of that and post that you fall in love for statistics so how did that you know transform how did you fall in love for statistics yeah i'll be honest yeah so i took I took I took some statistics classes and I was like I don't get it. <laughs> it's really complicated. It looks scary. There's equations, all those sigmas, and they're like we did integrating and things like oh. And I was just like that everything's different all the time. And that I just fell in love with that. I didn't understand statistics. I didn't understand how you know I, I was I wasn't doing well on my tests or my homework. But I at least appreciated that statistics was all about trying to understand this variety and this awesomeness that we live in. And um, and I just so I was like, I have to learn this. I have to understand this because there's nothing else that I know of that's like this. Uh, so I, I just committed a lot of time and spent a lot of effort, oh, years and years, to be honest, uh, trying to understand these basic concepts. And, and there's I still feel like there's more to learn, but um, but that's how I fell in love with it. And I just was like, oh, well, I have to teach myself because nobody else is teaching this the way I can understand. So Yeah, that that's amazing. You know, one yeah. of my practical implementation of statistics was when I was working with this marketing team and they ran some campaign and we wanted to check the effectiveness of that campaign. And through that, I started researching about different tests. Uh, you know, there was Z-test, P-test, Chi-square, mm -hmm. ANOVA. So would you like to, you know, since you are in front of me, would you like to just give me a walkthrough? Like if you would be my leader, how would you suggest me to go about that? Or if someone in our audience wants to, you know, start implementing it, how can they go about it? Yeah. Um, golly, uh, skip the Z test. <laughs> 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 Z, Z tests are a big mystery to me because you never actually use them ever. <laughs> There's because because I mean okay, I mean in theory, skip the yeah. It is important to understand what you're talking about. The very first yeah. thing is I I would learn. I would learn the T test and I would learn how it works. And uh, for me, and this is going to sound really weird and backwards. When people teach statistics, they start with a T test. And I think that's a mistake. Uh, I think this T test is actually kind of a complicated thing. And what's interesting is like when people teach statistics, they usually wait to present linear regression, which I think is a huge mistake. Uh, I think we should start with linear regression. Start with start with regression because those kind of graphs and that kind of data a lot of people are familiar with. You know, we when I was in high school, I learned how to I learned the equation for a straight line like you know, a or y equals bx plus c or you know, it's like you can understand there's a basic equation for a line and we can get the sense that you know if if all of our data points are on a line you know we can figure out what's a good line to fit to that yeah. data just have it run down the data uh but oftentimes data isn't that way like i was saying like every time i get french fries i get a different number of french fries if we weighed you know a, a person you excuse me if we weigh a person you're going to get a different weight uh for that person uh, for not that person, but uh, but different people. Or if you use a different scale, some scales are more precise than others. Uh, so yeah, you could get different weights for the exact same person. Um, but uh, I always start with regression and understand regression and sort of what it does. Uh, it's easy to, I, I just feel like it's it's a relatively easy way to enter statistics because it builds on what you're already, you've already you already learned how to draw a line and how to graph data. And we're just taking that or adding a little bit of variation to that theme. And then get this, all a t-test is, is this type of regression. It's a subset of, of linear regression. It's a specific application. And if you can, and, and it's, and it's, and it's actually when you, when you, when you draw out a t-test in terms of linear regression, it's actually a lot easier for me, at least, to understand what's going on with that t-test and how it works. And once you understand what it's doing and how it works, 
you can start seeing how to apply it. You can be like, oh, I see how this relates to what I'm doing at work, what I'm doing with this data set. This, you know, these the, we we had uh, we had two different uh, you know ways of laying out our website, and we want to decide if uh, if one is better than the other in terms of like how many people, um, you know, how much time they spent on the page. You know, so we can measure how much time people spent on page A and how much time people spent on page B. And we can use a T test to decide if if there's a difference. Uh, and 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 that's just a it, believe it or not, it's just a type of linear regression. Um, wow. And so that that's what I would recommend doing is like just going in deep with linear regression and then learning about a T test in that contest. And then you'll see how these things work and you'll understand it in a deep way and then you'll start being able to relate it to the data that's around you at work at home everywhere wow that was super amazing and insightful thank you so much josh for explaining that mm -hmm. lastly i just have one question for you what okay. would be like top five statistics concept you would recommend anyone in uh you know business working as a data analyst or a data scientist yeah according to you yeah, I think I think the obviously the most important thing for me is variation. Just top, you know, and but in order to understand variation, you have to understand um, sort of the basics between that. You have to understand the difference between a population parameter and an estimated parameter. You have to understand what the population mean is versus an estimated mean, and 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 I so I would say uh, so we'll. Oh, in order of importance, variation is the most important one, but we have to build up to that. So we're going to talk about population versus estimated parameters, and we're going to talk about the mean, specifically the mean. And once we have that, then we can talk about variation um, and then linear regression. Uh, I think I think those are the most important things. And if you can get those, you can actually derive most of statistics from those basic principles um so those are those are my favorite and i think those are the most important that everyone should know wow thank you so much and that brings us to the end of the podcast thank you for inaugurating this with the first ever podcast of decoding data analytics thank you so much for you know approving this for podcast and you know bringing yeah. in yourself thank yeah. you so much Josh. yeah thank you very much for having me it's been a real pleasure and uh, yeah great thank you sure Thank <laughs> you.